G'day everyone, welcome to the Sydney Chapel. Uh, we are doing the .NET user group for March 2022, and we have a big night coming up, and that is uh, later on you're going to see Patrick Zhao, who will be talking about microservices. And uh, he's done, uh, he's been in charge of several microservice projects, and uh, I, it's always interesting when you see all the hard work of the development go live, um, you know, in one case, there was an extranet scenario with lots of people connecting onto the systems, and you can never really replicate that in, in tests. So when it goes live, it's just amazing to watch what happens on the day. And, you know, uh, there was one, one microservice maxing out, and, you know, you could just turn that off so it didn't affect everyone. And, um, you know, it lets everything else go back. Only a tiny piece of the, of the app is not working and then you can diagnose that. And it's just wonderful to, to uh, watch all that stuff. So uh, he'll be talking about some of that and hopefully you'll understand a bit more about microservices. Let's jump into the first piece of news. And I'm starting off with this uh, state of JavaScript. Everyone's interested in this, there's lots of stuff here. There's some big surveys. Um, I'll just go on to the libraries. I'm always interested in this. Um, when I have a look at this, uh, I'm sure everybody looks at this a little differently, but you can see beautiful uh, graphics here. You know, it's very interactive. But I always go straight to usage because I think that's always the most important thing for me. And I used to, um, well, React. That's uh, certainly huge, 80%, and Angular, 54%. Uh, I used to say it was a two-horse race, but as you can see, Vue is 51%. So it's uh, definitely a three-horse race at the moment. Uh, but I would say most of the projects we do are React and Angular. And in China, most of the projects we do are Vue. So uh, what else have we got here? We got back-end frameworks. Um, well, obviously, our back-end is always C-sharp. But if you're going to go JavaScript, uh, let's, let's go usage. And you've got uh, Express, the most popular. Now, Next.js and Gatsby obviously can be backends. We use them for static sites. Static sites. If you've been to SSW rules or SSW people or um, other projects, we've typically used Gatsby. We use Next.js a lot as well. Um, I know plenty of others uh, are popular too. Uh, Strapi's popular, etc. All right, so uh, you can use a uh, headless CMS and you can use one of those as well as this scenario. Testing, what's popular in testing? Let's have a look, usage. Jest is number one, Mocha, Storybook. We use Storybook a fair bit with React sites, uh, Puppeteer. Look at this one, Playwright. Uh, we like that. Uh, Matt Goldman did an awesome video on this one. See how it's going up from 3% to 10%? I think that might be based on Matt's awesome video. Here it is. I just threw it up here. Do you use uh, automated testing? He walks through how he uses Playwright to um, test his APIs and uh, he's got a great little video on how that works. But basically, um, he, you have a very nice way of doing uh, kind of automated tests to the uh, API layer. Uh, what else have we got here? Mobile and desktop. OK, let's have a look. If you're using JavaScript, what's the biggest one? Electron, interesting. React Native, I would have thought that was first, so I'm a bit surprised. I've seen it drop down 1%, and I can see Electron's popped up a bit. Um, so uh, I'm not seeing Xamarin here because it's not a JavaScript library. Uh, obviously, Maui is coming, so it's going to be, uh, uh, well, it won't be in this list. Uh, we have uh, Flutter as well, not in this list, which is also very popular as well. All right, so let's move on. What else have we got here? Well, this is a little bit of news, Blazorize, so I think it's, uh, this has been, we've been using this for a fair while. Uh, I think the fact that it's 1.0 indicates that Blazor is uh, here for, uh, is getting more mature, I guess. So that's awesome. Uh, so it's been shipped. So if it's been shipped, how is it slow cooked? All right, let's move on to the next piece of news. We're going to go with uh, .NET 7 Preview 1, OK? We were just talking about .NET 6. We're just trying to get our projects onto it, and we're onto .NET 7. So uh, there's lots of cool stuff. What's the coolest stuff in .NET 7? Well, I think most people are going to say Maui. Maui is the 
um, is the replacement of uh, Xamarin coming soon. Uh, I wish this was already here, um, but we're spending uh, already a bit of time uh, on Maui, even though it's so new. And there's plenty of other bits and pieces. Let's jump into some of those bits. And that is uh, ASP.NET Core. Uh, there's a bunch of things. I think most people will say minimal APIs, which is probably, uh, there's, there's, plenty, there's plenty of stuff here, but the minimal API improvements uh, to make it simpler, less code is probably uh, the go. I guess it's getting a little bit like Express.js. What other news? We have Entity Framework. Okay, so we are at EF Core 6 today, and we will be, we're dropping Core, so I guess the biggest change will be the name. So it'll be EF7. See, we've just made it simpler, EF7. Um, all right. Next piece of news is what is cool in C Sharp? Well, there's a lot. There's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot. And this might be the most popular piece, parameter null checking. Nulls are the bane of our existence. Does anyone enjoy nulls? No, they're painful. Um, well, we are, instead of having null checking like this, we're going to see a lot of this. Okay, exclamation, ex exclamation. Uh, can I just check who thinks this is a cool feature? Okay. Does anyone think it's not a cool feature and wouldn't use it? Okay. Oh, uh, you answered. <laughs> you can't be on both sides of this. What happens if the string's white space or empty? What happens if it what? It's an empty string. What happens if it's an empty string? Well, it's not a null, is it? Good question. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, it doesn't solve all problems. All right, good. So, next one. This is kind of a... Uh, probably a feature that uh, is a DevOps feature. We know that it's better to commit small pieces of code, okay? We do, do, we, we do a coding challenge for uh, people that apply for jobs at SSW. And of course, uh, a lot of it is whether you can understand and other parts is whether you can write code. But I always find it interesting that um, the way developers, especially senior developers versus junior developers, Junior developers just do it all and just do a check-in, where senior developers go to you know, intelligent parts of the app and check in little by little by little. Now, what you uh, might have uh, always had a problem with is when you start doing some code and you fix the little thing and then you go on and now you hit something and this is gonna take a long time. But the bit of code you just did was nice and done, and you probably should have committed that before. Well, now you can uh, step back and go, hang on a sec, I'll do a diff here, and I'll press this plus stage, see the plus stage? And you can commit that chunk that you just did, okay? Uh, that is awesome that we're getting it now. I wish we had it a long time ago. All right, but we have it now, great. So that's line staging or interactive staging. All right, what is the next piece of news? The next piece of news is this .au. So we've always had, for example, ssw.com.au. Now we can have ssw.au. So you will be able to buy this. You can't buy it right today, but you'll be able to buy it very soon, 24th of March. And now we're gonna have a whole new set of problems with uh, domain squatters jumping in and getting that. So get, get, get on the list. All right, what have we got here in uh, GitHub? This is always exciting. Some stuff here about index page filtering. So some nice searching, searching and filtering is very important. But this is even more important, nice charts. Don't you love nice charts? Well, now we uh, have some, some uh, custom charts you can make. And uh, Matt, is there some built-in ones too? Yep, built-in ones too, so there we go. So that's getting better and better, so we need that, and that's great, especially for Scrum teams. Oh, and look at this. When we close something, this is very annoying. When you give something to a project and they just say closed, um, closed as completed, closed as not done, okay? 
Giving a reason is really important. And now you can do that and you can obviously filter as well. So there's stuff always coming for GitHub. All right, VS Code. We spend uh, a fair bit of time in VS Code. Uh, I think most developers spend more time in VS Code than uh, Visual Studio these days on average, but I could be wrong on that, but uh, that's certainly what it feels like. And there's a bunch of new features, and there is a lot of features here. And as, you know, it's just, this, this editor is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Is it getting slower and slower? It's, I don't know how they're managing it, but it's not getting slower, but it's, uh, but it's getting richer. So let's, let's jump down to two particularly cool features. Inlay hints. So now, instead of hovering to find things, you can just read and uh, you can just read what type it is, et cetera. So this is quite nice. So these are the inlay hints. And another nice one in there is, let's look at this, drag and drop. Uh, right, let's go to this, uh, well, editor split view. That's interesting. I've never actually heard of anybody wanting to uh, move that along. Has anybody ever wanted to move that? No one. Oh, anyway, well, they gave us a feature anyway. Um, so the drag and drop problem search results. Here you can find something and you can drag that. Now, what is useful with this feature is you can uh, make, you can have different editor groups. Uh, I see sometimes when the uh, developers are working with Markdown, they're working on Markdown, but they've got the preview window on the side. So you can have different um, preview groups. So you can find something now and then drag it onto the, you know, the editor group that you want. Okay, so that's kind of nice. So hopefully that was uh, useful. If I if there's some other news, uh, let me know. Throw it down in the comments. If you have some other opinion of what is cooler than what I've showed you in uh, this month's news, definitely let me know. Um, we have a bunch of videos on SSW TV. And this month, I thought this was pretty cool. Yuli did a video on just how he searches his inbox that has over a million items in here. He's been working at SSW for more than 15 years. And he shows how he finds any email ever so quickly. He's very good at that. So uh, hopefully you uh, enjoy that. And I will see you next month uh, for the SSW Tech News.